Oh, man, you scared me. Hey, I'm just walking around the dungeon here, checking out, making sure everything's okay. And uh, so far, so good. But hey, since you're here, let me tell you what. Why don't you come with me and let's check out the Wardlings miniature line. Now, if you're not familiar with Wardlings, you should check out my other video all about the Wardlings 5th edition compatible campaign guide. And it's geared specifically for kids. So, if you've got children, maybe you should consider watching it and see if it's something you should add to your 5th edition collection. But right now, let's go take a look at our 5th edition Wardlings. Okay, so let's take a look at the WizKids Wardlings miniature line. And instantly right out the gate, I think what I like about this, and you'll like about it too, is you're going to get two pre-painted figures for $8. I mean, as it is, the Nolzers line, you get two unpainted figures for $5. So it's not much more, really, when you think about it. And, of course, they both they all come with their bases, and they are very well detailed. And what I also like about them is something that is sometimes hard to find with other miniatures, and that is familiars, and familiars that are sized enough to where you can actually see them. A lot of times we get some really small familiars, but here we get some good-sized familiars with each of these wordlings. Now, you could use these in your own Dungeons & Dragons game. Uh, of course, these figures do look a little young, but that's what I do like about the scope and the detail, is they do convey the youth of the characters in each of these miniatures set, and I'm pretty impressed. Now let's take a look at one of them out of the package, like this Go Rogue with Badger. Let's go ahead and pop her right out here and see what we've got here. Of course, it comes with two bases, just regular old super glue or plastic glue will work. And let's just get a close-up. Although the packaging is pretty good to check them out. But look at this little badger. I mean, that's some pretty good detail on him for a badger. Especially being as small as he is. There we go. I mean, look at those eyes. I, I mean, they're all like that. It's not just this one. Even the one that I got for myself, it's this detailed. It's not just a fluke. I'm pretty impressed. And the base itself... Even though you get a big 25 millimeter base to put them on, you've already got a little bit of basing on him. It's textured and it's painted. So that way, all you got to do is put just a little bit more paint on the base to make it complete. Let's take a look at the, the girl herself here. Look at that. Okay, eyes maybe need a little work, but that's, I mean, I am super close. I mean, when you're playing, you know, your miniature's way out here. No one's going to know, you know? But overall, I mean, look at that. I mean, the quality is really good. And where she's standing, her base is, again, textured and painted. So if you want to, when you put the 25 millimeter base on, all you got to do is put a little paint around it and you're good. She so got twin daggers and they all got pretty good poses and they look very, very good. I mean, they're clean. Yeah, these Wardlings, they are definitely worth the price. I mean, $8 for two, you can't beat that. Now, of course, you can't have characters and no monsters. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these characters aside and we're going to take a look at the monsters. Okay, so which monster is up first in our Wardlings lineup? Well, that's going to actually be a pair of them, a pair of zombies. And look at the detail I get on these guys. Just like with the characters, you actually have... They're almost fully clothed, where most zombies usually aren't. It's just the barest amount of rags, and they're actually holding implements, which I think is pretty cool. And again, you're getting two pre-painted miniatures for $8, just like this mud orc and mud puppy, which it kind of looks more like a big salamander, newt, or uh, axolotl. Uh, here we have a wind orc and a vulture. I mean, and these are really cool, unique poses, and some pretty interesting familiars too. And you don't have to use them as familiars. You can use them as whatever you want. Here we have a fire orc and a fire centipede. And let's go ahead and just open this right up and let's get just a slightly closer look at the detail that these have. And I actually got a couple of each of these because I think I could find a use for a lot of these guys. Look at this orc. He's wielding all sorts of powerful magic or He's from the elemental plane of fire. I mean, you throw him out on the board, your players aren't going to know what's going on with this guy. And again, detail's not too bad. He's pre-painted. Same thing with the base. 
and let's check out his fire centipede. Oh man, I tell you, I wish, I wish I could find more of these things. I wish I could find a pack of these things. I would pay 20 bucks just to get four of these guys. I mean, this thing is amazing. I mean, I really, I really like the creativity of this whole line. It's really, really cool. Now, strangely enough, there's one monster that I am a little confused on, and that's the just the regular standard orc. Um, he actually is by himself. There's no other miniature. I don't know if they intended for him to have a familiar, but he's really, quite frankly, the same size as the other ones, so I'm not sure why they decided not to include a second one. But he's still pretty cool, and for eight bucks, pre-painted miniature, not a bad deal. Now, of course, there are some other monsters, like this menacing-looking devil. Oh, he'd fit right into any campaign, and he's even got a... Looks like a large base right there. And we've got a cool looking dragon. Pretty wild. And it's nice that he's actually purple. Some people might disagree, but it's nice because you don't really get confused with uh, the classic D&D dragons. And if you wanted to, well, if you're always a little crafty, you could always repaint them. But quite frankly, I wouldn't. I mean, what a great looking miniature. And let's take a look, last but not least, at their griffin. And let's go to crack him open real quick, since I've already got him pre-cut open. Again, got a nice large base. And this detail. Look at that. Look at that. What a great looking pose. He's ready to take off or it looks like almost looks like he's maybe landing or maybe he's fighting someone or even you. Look at that. Not too bad. Now, if it was me and I got this guy, there's some spots where I might touch up here and there, but you know, I like him. For pre-painted miniatures, these guys, this is a good deal. And quite frankly, I think you'd be remiss not to take advantage of these miniatures. Even if you don't play Ward Lanes, you should definitely take advantage of the potential that this line has to add to your game. Uh, uh, hey, well, I appreciate you sticking around and watching my video on Ward Lanes. Uh, I hope you think the miniatures are really cool. And, uh, well, I can't talk for long. I'm Dave Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, telling you to stay safe, play great games, and I'll see you real soon. Ah!